Welcome to the McAllister Report. We join John McAllister, top football evaluator, as he shares wisdom and interviews coaches and athletes from around the country. Enjoy today's podcast. This is the John McAllister Report. I'm John McAllister, and today I have a great, intelligent, former Ohio State quarterback, Greg Fry, as my guest. And Greg Fry is a quarterback from 1986, I think, and played in those really, really good Ohio State years. So I'm excited. I met him. I have met him over the years as a broadcaster for Central Ohio football games. And I know he runs a quarterback training school. He works with quarterbacks, not big, not a lot of numbers. He tries to do individually, into more individual work. So I sit back and we talk about other things, but we uh, just of it is about quarterbacking. So sit back and enjoy my podcast with Greg Fry. Mr. F- Greg Fry, how are you doing today? Doing great, John. Appreciate you having me on. Well, I I don't really respect that many people, but I really think you do a great job, and so I think it's important. We're going to talk about talk about different things, <clears throat> but it's all going to boil down to quarterback training, and I think that's what you do well. I mean, obviously, you're you're the quarterback offensive coordinator at Bexley. But I think where you help more and more kids is when you do the individual training. Okay, yeah, that's true. And, and you have Sun Jackson coming along right now. Yeah. And uh, I'll give you a question: how How hard is it to coach your own son? But we'll do that in a minute. Okay, Greg, you got your start at uh, Saint Xavier High School in about 1986, 85, and and Steve Speck is a very good friend of mine. He yeah. was a hard nut to crack, but we did. Yeah. And I think the world of him. In fact, he sent me a book last year. Yeah. Uh, he called me or texted me and said, what's your address? And, and I, but he's, I really like him a lot. And to name drop, who was the defensive backfield coach there that time? Well, I ask people that a lot. Like, cause I, you know, to, uh, I'll say what was Urban Meyer's first coaching job? Okay. Nobody right. knows. Nobody knows that he was a volunteer right. assistant coach at St. Xavier high school. Yeah. Because he played at UC and came yeah. out of there. Didn't he, he? he coached DBs, but he really hung out with our offensive coordinator, John Sabatello, because we were doing things offensively. All due respect to Steve and, and his defensive side of the ball, you know, yeah. we were doing some pretty amazing things offensively back then. So that was Urban Meyer's first entree into football. Right. Coaching Let's go back. And then I would ask you a couple questions because you were a heck of a baseball player. And I know you got, oh, gee, you got drafted by the Tigers, I think. Yeah. So with that being said, and you were pretty good, and and that's still there. Some kids still like that now, but not so much at Ohio State. You know, it's more of a Mac schools that get drafted in baseball. So tell me, you pro, you're a proponent of two sports in high school or three? Oh, in high school, I think absolutely, um, at least two. Uh, it, it's tough to play three, you know, and that this has come up in conversation with my son here recently because he plays basketball as well, and now he's like, well, maybe I should play a spring sport and. You know that that's kind of two to three is is a is a that that's worth a discussion. But I do believe you should not just focus on one sport. And if you ask any, I'm sure you know this better than me. If you ask any, you know, a recruiter or college coach, they like to see kids that have played multiple sports. Totally yeah. agree. Yeah, I've heard uh, uh, the wide receiver coach at Ohio State because he was a tremendous track guy, and he said there's nothing like lining up in the 110 meter hurdles. You know that's so tough. And uh, it's so good and everything. And then also, I think it's I think it's important to play two. And and I just think you really need to rest and you need to work on your 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 craft that you love the most. You got to find time in there sometimes. But that's I really want- that's, that's well, just that's what my son and I have discussed because he's he's talking about either baseball or track in spring. I said, well, maybe you need a little time to rest. Yeah, your brain. And the folks in the weight room and the other, you know, fundamentals of football, et cetera. So there you go. See, kids don't think that, 
now because I did a Twitter on you know just take some time off. Quarterbacks, you don't you don't have to start throwing right away. You don't have to. I mean, right away. I'm talking. You know, take some. Get your mind and relax a little bit. And, you know, talk to your visit with your parents and your girlfriend. I mean, just study or whatever, but get away from it. Agree. But uh, yeah, two sports I think are real is really good. I think the other thing I ask every offensive lineman, the very first thing is, do you play basketball? And uh, some of them will say I have, which means in junior high. But I said I think it's so important for linemen. <laughs> you know, unless if you're one of the top eight on that team, you know, I would play basketball. If you're eleven or twelve, I don't know for sure, right. but uh, it's good. Two sports, and you were a really good baseball player, a, yeah. uh, an outfielder. Okay, but you didn't hit home runs, so how could you play the outfield? You know, those guys have. I did actually. Um, well, in in college, I, I ended up in the outfield, but in high school, I was I was a pitcher and a first baseman. Right. Um, but uh, when I got to college, you know, I missed four years of baseball. I didn't play for four years while I was focusing on football. So when I tried out for the team at Ohio State with with Bob Todd, it was, you know, I knew I had to hit my way in the lineup, and I didn't right. care what put me. Yeah. And you know, at that point, not having not played four years, it made more sense to, you know, hide me in the outfield. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's where I ended up, and I was fine with that. That's really good. That speaks well of you. Okay, and the other thing I saw that in some article it said, you said, I am a coach at heart. I am a coach at heart. That That's good. That's so huge. Not everybody's a coach at heart. Now, some of them act like they're coaches at heart. But they're not, and that's great. What made you want to say that you're a coach at heart? Um, I'm very passionate about life in general. For me, when I coach, you know, that it's probably one of the only things I do in my life where I feel like time stands still, like I'm not aware of time. Yeah. And it's, it's a unique feeling, and I notice that a lot of times when I'm coaching, like time just disappears. I'm so focused and so engrossed on what I'm doing because I'm so passionate about it. You know, nothing else matters at that point. And coaching is, is really the one thing in my life that does that. Um, you know, otherwise, you know, this past weekend I was out, you know, it was 38 degrees, you know, outside, you know, throwing with young quarterbacks that are focused on next year. And that's a really good – and I told them, I said, look, is anybody else here out here working right now? And they're like, nope. I said, that's right, it's you, right? And I'm here because I want to help you. Yeah. And uh, that's a good feeling. That's really huge. And if you want to have success in Ohio, like in playing the playoffs, you better get used to playing the cold weather, right? Oh, oh my, oh my, my, my. I'm not sitting in cold weather very much anymore, but I I used to. Let's talk about Bexley. Why, why Bexley? Because I'm sure you could coach other places. You're coaching in a smaller school, and you won the last game of the year, right? Last year? <laughs> we did. We. We lost eight in a row, but we finished with a win in overtime against Grandview. So that uh, that changed the whole dynamic of how we look at next year. Oh my goodness! Well, my first year at Lakota, we were seven and three, and the next year we we're zero and ten. You talk about going from the <laughs> White House to the Out House. Right. Let's talk about coaching quarterbacks, and you know there's so many guys doing it now. Yes. Why do you coach quarterbacks? It's what you know. It's what I know. It's what I'm passionate about. Um, I, I am absolutely a student of the game. I watch, I watch successful people in a lot of areas of life. Football and quarterback training for, for me is one area where I, I focus tremendously and I have for all my life. I, I was blessed with a tremendous coach um, in high school, John Sabatella, who was the first one who really taught me fundamentals that have stuck with me the rest of my life. And I've really taken it from there. So I feel like I bring a unique perspective of I have played the position at a high level, um, you know, great high school, obviously Ohio State. I played some professionally. Um, I've been on I, I've coached high school football now. This is this is now I've got six years. Um, and I've also been the broadcast booth. You know, you and I have seen each other in many press boxes. So I've watched the game, um, the college and, and high school game from the press box, which is a completely different animal. So I, I feel like I have some very unique perspectives. Um, and again, I, I, I don't claim to have all the answers, but what I tell young men and I'll tell their parents is what I'm giving you is proven because I see a lot of coaches that teach things that are not proven or they're not sound fundamentally and they actually hurt their quarterbacks 
and either they don't know it or they just you know, they just don't know any better. And it's not a crit critique, but I want to bring something to the table that's that works. And what I teach works. And sometimes it goes against the grain because not many people are really aware of it. Um, so, you know, somebody that comes to me knows they're going to get great training. I can say that. I, I agree. And uh, one question, when you played, I was been trying to brainstorm on this because I saw you play and I started the business, I think, three or four years after you were out, the early 90s, I think. Okay. But when you you had a kind of a short motion, but you had a, the ball got out quick. Would you say that? Or, and ball, and I thought it was a little bit of a baseball thing. You didn't really have a long motion, I don't think, but the ball got out of your hands quick. Does that make yeah, sense? I, I think so. And I, and I think to me that goes down to footwork. You know, I, I, I mean, I just said this probably 10 times last weekend. You hear these commentators talk about so-and-so has got a quick release. Well, to me, 98% of quick release is your feet. Yeah. You know, unless you get a really long windup. I mean, that, right. that slow right. down, obviously. But most guys are cocked the back and you're throwing. But it, it's all about your feet, especially the placement of your left foot. If you get the left foot on the ground quickly, that falls out. But if you take a while to put that foot down, not going to happen. So, yeah, I think that that stemmed from the coaching I got way back from John Sabatello to really learn about that now. And you don't have to take that long stride on that no. left foot. It, it's, it's, it's more like almost like a base a hitter in baseball. Yeah. You know, point, like, yeah. Quick, just get it. Get your hit. So you get your hips opening up a little bit. Correct. It, it's prop. You know, I for all these years, I've never coached one kid on hips. What I coach is the proper alignment because they all know how to rotate their hips. Right. You got to get them in the right place. Yeah. And I and I can tell you, ninety nine percent of the kids I work with, their alignment of their lower bodies were off, yeah. and they don't. They're not even aware. No. And when I show them how to do it properly, they're like, "Oh wow, okay." And guess what? They're more accurate, and they probably pick up some velocity because they're really tapping into their full rotation. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. And then I would tell you what scares me some of the new philosophies right now in quarterback coaching. We, you and I have a discussion on that. And we're not going to get into it now. <laughs> Trust me. Well, I don't. Yeah. There's a lot. Look, there's a lot of stuff out there. Um, and, and I'm open. I will say this. I'm very open to learning and I've adjusted my training watching pro quarterbacks. And again, if, if I'm watching somebody have success doing something, then I'm interested. Right. So Here's I have my training to that. Yes. And here's the thing, too. I think Patrick Holmes has only had one co quarterback coach, okay? And he's it's, he's up in the sky, okay? It's God. He's God. Get, I mean, they try to – I really believe this. People try to coach, like, uh, Holmes, Patrick Holmes pl c throws and stuff. Some of that stuff is just so natural. You can't coach that. If people try – I think they're making a mistake. You know, it's, I mean, they're throwing backwards and sidearm, and but I, I think they're, you know, they Patrick Holmes does it well for sure, but he, he's a he's a freak in a way. I mean, he's just really, really, you know, he, he's yeah. the exception. He's the, he's the point one percent. I mean, he he is by yeah. far the exception. Exactly. But I will say, I will say that I'll use him as an example. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, Josh Allen, etc. Uh, the some of the things that they do. The young kids can do, yeah. and I've, I've experimented with this. I'll say, I don't ask him. I said, let me let's do a drill, and I just want you to do what I'm doing, yeah. and I'll I'll make a throw like some of those guys make with their with their feet that aren't really set, and they and they can do it. So I've learned to you know if I can open my mind to this, there are some things that they can do that I can peel away from what these pro guys are doing that yeah. can work at the high school level. But at, but at the same time, we're not going there unless you uh, show me you can absolutely master the basic fundamentals because if you can't get past that then we're not doing anything else yeah. that's where i'm a little bit old school yeah that's that's good uh joey burrow excuse me joe burrow now but when joey played i saw him his junior year or maybe a senior year but i thought it was his junior year and uh i told him afterwards i said keep everything the same but just develop your core muscles and uh, his dad told me, he said he actually took that to heart. And I, of course, I'm, no, I'm not taking any credit for Joe Burrows, for heaven's sakes, any. But I think what I'm getting into is are those core muscles need to be so strong in the back and the chest. And the, yes. I think that's huge. And I don't think quarterbacks need, I don't think they need our the, here, I don't think they need arm muscles. And, I mean, up in their neck and stuff. I don't think quarterbacks 
Baseball pitchers don't have them, and I don't think quarterbacks need them. But they need those core muscles out with. Do you core agree? Core, or, yeah. I, I do. I do. The core is it's. I mean, as is many other sports, right? But um, it's the quarterback throw now has become more rotational, right. um, which taps into your core. Um, and I would also say, you know, there's certain muscles that back, and I don't get too deep into that. I, you know, I've studied a little bit of Tom House and how he's helped some of these pro quarterbacks rehab and or just improve their throwing. Right. You know, and it, the muscles in your back, I can't really point to it, but you know, I noticed that now because now I'm 54 now, and I still throw the ball a lot, and I can feel the limitation in my back muscles, like they're not as, right. as strong as they are, and I've lost some velocity, you know, and and um, it is what it is. But my core's still strong, so I've learned. You know, people ask me, like, man, you can still throw it pretty good. And my arm never gets stressed, ever. And I throw it a lot. And it's because I use mostly my core and it's more right. rotational throw. And a really good workout, your back, your lower back should be a little tired sometimes and sore. Yeah. You know, if, you're, if you've really done it correctly, I think. Right. But it's, okay. less, it's less arm movement. Right. Less well, rest it's rest good. Rest. It's good. I, I have learned a lot so far. I think this is good. Uh, let's couple more things and we'll be done. Talk, tell me about coaching your son now. I joked with you earlier. How, and you're going to have him, he was a freshman last year. So what's he doing now to get better as a quarterback? Yeah. Well, first of all, it's, it is unique coaching my son, but I love it. And that's why I'm coaching at Bexley. You know, I, I right. guess I had an opportunity to go elsewhere. You know, Bexley is not exactly a football powerhouse. I will say that as a coaching staff, you know, we have a vision for where this can go. Uh, I've actually been at Bexley previously where we won, I think, 22 games in three years back, you know, 20 years ago. So it's it's possible. Um, so, you know, I uh, right now he's playing basketball and he but he also has this this he, he's got a little bit of drive like I had, which I don't you know, it's it's part of what he has. He wants to work. He's wanted to throw a couple of times in the last couple of weeks. And I'm like. Time out. Go focus on basketball, right? It's okay, right? Good. But he's That's hungry, good. and I like that, right? Good. So right now, it's about just focus on basketball and relax and chill a little Have bit. Have some fun, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, when that's all done, we can really start, you know, getting into, I think, you know, the next steps for him, where I think he played in, I think, seven games out of nine this past season. Had a couple injuries in, here and there. It's a lot as a freshman, you know. It, it's I was a little bit torn. Like, is it really worth playing him as a freshman? But he earned the job. And, um, you know, he, he showed me he could be tough. He began to learn how to read defenses, you know, and understand pass protections and making reads, all this kind of things. And I think the, the, the beauty of it is there was a lot of ugliness this year, you know, from a team standpoint, and just his learning curve was so steep. But I, I believe as we get into next year, the game's going to start to slow down for him as a sophomore. And he's got so much time ahead of him. And that's where we can really, you know, begin to learn. Because it's, it's way beyond fundamentals at that point. It's about – Watch the film, you know, understanding what you're looking at defensively and all those things that are part of the complexities of playing quarterback and, you know, making quick decisions where you got to take in all this information, et cetera. So um, we'll be watching a lot of film. We'll be working fundamentals continually um, and probably gaining a better understanding of what we're doing offensively. That's really good. I think two things there, Coach, that I, I think kids, even at the – Big school, Division One schools, quarterbacks. Not all of them do their progression. You know, not all of them do their 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 coach says, okay, this is to the wide receiver. So that's he doesn't understand. You know, to you know, avoid you know, only throw to him and avoid everybody else, or he doesn't understand. And plus, I think the other thing is, my goodness, we had Coach Trestle and I once joked about the old. 16 millimeter cameras and video years. Of course, that's what we have. But now, I mean, my goodness, it's so much, e so much easy, easier to get on video. I mean, so much easier. And I think that's kids. And a lot of the guys, uh, boys I interview will say, yeah, I, I watch as much film as I can and stuff like that. And I think it's just so important yeah. to, to, because I really believe coach as a head coach, if you watch enough on your opponent, you get a feel on that Friday night what's going on. I mean, you're just so oh, yeah. into it. You get not comfortable, but you get a feel for what's 
and oh, I remember that. And then this guy's going to be open or something like that. But and I think it's also important. And, and you know, you can, I don't think you can get enough film. But what I what I like to teach my guys is how to watch film. You're not yeah. just you're not watching TV. Like there, you're looking at specific things. And then yeah. to be able That's to transfer true. that to a quarterback's eyes, and this is where um, I've really had some fun the last couple of years of determining the eyes and how they affect quarterbacks. And that's a whole that's a whole other um, which says it can't work. Oh, yes. When you're talking about reads, it's important as a coach to understand what exactly that they're looking at. Yeah. So I teach my guys if you're making a read like an over under read, like you're looking at one defender, right? Typically, and maybe a second guy, but if you can look at that one guy, he'll determine where your read's going to go based on how he moves. Yeah. And and that's how I used to read in, in my college. It was very simple, you know, because um, that one guy can't be right. If he goes one way, I'm going the other. Yeah. And I'll stare right at him. I don't care because he's not going to be right. Uh, and then when you learn how to use your eyes, that's when, you know, I'll, I'll hear, I hear this a lot. Well, you got to look off the defender. Well, for a young quarterback, no, they're not polished enough to look off the defender. Let them look where their read is. It's okay. <laughs> and I get, well, they're staring at, they're staring at where they're reading. Yeah, they got to look that direction, right? <laughs> but if they're advanced, yes, they can they can look off a read and come back. That's fine. But initially, not the case. But I guess the point of all that is where the eyes go on, you know, understanding specifically what to look at to right. determine where the ball is going to go. And then do you do that in seven on sevens and things like that too as well then, Greg? I mean, yeah, we I'm, I'm talking about out of season – and, and things like that. Are you, are you still working with kids on understanding that? Yes. So okay. in, in my quarterback training outside the season, um, we don't have enough kids or enough bodies to do seven on seven. But it's I'll do simple reads where I'll be the defender, and I'll get oh. like a curl and an arrow, and they're just okay. reading me. Okay. But just so they get the visual, and then they've got to make a decision. And they have to apply. And that's where typically what happens is they'll make the right decision, but their feet – and their body alignment won't catch up with the decision. So that's a whole other thing of I got to make the decision, but then I got to get my feet aligned properly to make right. an accurate throw. Right. Totally right. separate. You got to be able to marry the two together. And that takes a lot of work. Yeah. Most kids can't do that right away. Yeah. And again, you mentioned feet, feet. And so and, and the joke of that was it was at, uh, I think it was at Bo Jackson. I was standing there watching and I said, you know, to a parent, I said, you know, to me, it all starts with the feet. And they looked at me like I had no clue what I was talking about. What? Got to have arms. I said, okay, <laughs> I'm not going to spend all this time trying to debate you. But that's where parents sometimes get caught up in that. Well, Greg, you, you know, let's talk about quarterback training now uh, out of out of the regular season. And you started now, I think. I think you're doing it now. But yep. let's talk a little bit about it, okay? Yep. Yeah, my, my formal QB training name is QBOhio.com. Um, so people can find me online like that. They, you can also find me on social media. I have, uh, I'm have i on Instagram under QBOhio, as well as just Greg Fry 15 uh, as well as on on uh, Facebook, just under Greg Fry. So uh, a lot of okay. people reach out to me via via social media, which makes sense these days. Um, QBOhio.com, yes. that's, that's probably the easiest way. Or Greg Fry, I think. But yeah, yeah that's, I don't care what way. Just you can find okay. me. And then what? How long does it last? Yeah. So I, what I what I do most of my sessions are one on ones or small group. I don't I don't like the big groups. You know, uh -huh. uh, that's just kind of how I how I operate. But um, yeah, it's just a matter of uh, them contacting me, and because I had a parent reach out today and said, "Hey, you know, when do you start?" I'm like, "Well, I've already started for next year." Like I've had guys reach out to me since right. the end of the season that want to work. Um, you know, like eighth grade, especially ninth graders right now, because they start to see, oh, okay, like I got an opportunity, right? Um, so they just reach out to me and then I can give them the, the breakdown. There's a little bit of explanation on my my website as far as the type of sessions that I do. Um, but then it's a matter of just logistically setting up the time with me and we go. So there's, Coach, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. And I, we could talk about quarterbacking. I was, just so you know, I was the best touch football quarterback in Upper Sandusky, <laughs> man. <laughs> but other than, that, other than that, I was a linebacker, but I love being a quarterback. Thank you very much, Greg. I hope. John, thank you so much. I appreciate all you do, and I, and I, I greatly appreciate you having me on.